Mom is selfless, hardworking, and wonderful. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day, Day, Mom! We, we love, love you so much! <laughs> Big shout out to my wife, Sheila. She's the rock and the glue of our family. I really married up. Thanks, baby. Mama's awesome. Mama's great. We love you, Mama. We love you, Mama. Caring and funny. You are my rock. And, and our, our foundation. foundation. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Empathetic and selfless. You're compassionate and you're generous. I love you so much. Kind. Happy Mother's Day. Love you. You are stunning and one of a kind. We love you. Selfless. My wife Tabitha is caring, my best friend, and the best mother I've ever seen. My mama is simply beautiful. Give a hug for you. Happy Mother's Day. Love this. Love you. Good morning, Powell Church family and friends, and happy Mother's Day. I hope you all enjoyed that Mother's Day video and those words of gratitude and appreciation that many of us have for our mothers. We may not all be mothers, but we all do have a mother. And so we give thanks to God on this day for our mothers and for life and for love. My name is Brad Hyde. I'm lead pastor here at Powell Church, and we are so glad that you have joined us for online worship. And we want to encourage you to connect with us. If this is the first, second, third time that you have been with us, go to powellchurch.com. You can scroll down to the bottom of that page, and you can click on our digital connect card there. Fill out that information as much as you feel comfortable filling out, and we would love to be in touch with you. Also, right below that, you can sign up for our e-newsletter. We get out a lot of information about things that are happening at Powell Church, ministries that you can be involved in, and other announcements that we are seeking to get out to you as quickly as possible. So sign up for that so that you can be in the loop of information that we are sharing. Also, you can go to the top of our webpage and click on the Give tab. This is a way in which you can respond to God through the work and ministry of His church here. Here at Powell Church. Uh, you can give there on our webpage or you can download the Church Center app. And there at the bottom of the app is another way in which you can give online. Just follow those prompts and setting that up. And of course, you can always mail in a check to the church to the address that you see on your screen. Well, we are here to worship God on this day, on this Mother's Day. And so let's turn our hearts and let's turn our minds to God as we go to him and as we sing praises in his name. So let us worship the Lord, our God.
Well, now I want to invite you into a time of prayer. So often we pastors, leaders do the praying, but there are times that I believe that we also need to participate in something that is called corporate prayer. It's the prayer of the body of believers. It's a prayer that we all pray together, that we pray aloud with one another. And so I'm going to invite you into a time of corporate prayer, and you will find this prayer on the screen. So join in as we pray together as a body, as we all pray together aloud, a prayer to the Lord our God. Let us pray to God. God of power and might, we are Easter people because you raised Jesus from the grave. As you delivered him, you also deliver us from sin's grip and death's destruction. We praise you for the gift of life, for the forgiveness of sin, and for giving us new life. Thank you for all the victories over sin and evil in our lives, for the loyalty and love of family and friends, for the renewal of nature and the beauty of the earth for the continuing witness of your church in this world. We also bring to you our prayers for people affected by the coronavirus, for nations and leaders to unite in purpose to fight this pandemic, for the families of those who have lost loved ones, for wisdom to move forward in ways that love others more than our own self-interests. By raising Jesus from the dead, you have shown a life of love, joy, and hope. We praise you, Lord of life. In the name of the resurrected Jesus, we pray. Amen. This is not the way I thought my life would have gone. This is not a part of the plan that I had for my life. I wish things would have played out a little differently. How many times have we said one or maybe all three of these statements in our lives? I know I have. And as a pastor, I can't tell you the number of times I've heard other people say these things as well. I'll never forget one time a man came to my office. He was broken. He was at the end of his rope. He shared with me that his marriage was about to fall apart, and that was not something he wanted. In fact, he said, Brad, this, this isn't supposed to happen. It's not supposed to be this way. This isn't the plan that I have for my life. Will you pray with me? Will you pray that my marriage will be healed, that it will be mended, that we will not go through a divorce? And of course, I took his hands in my office there and we prayed for that. Well, a few months later, I heard that they filed for divorce. And it was hard to watch him go through all of that. He was broken and in fact, he became frustrated with God because I knew that he had been praying to God that his marriage would be healed. I knew others had been praying to God on his behalf that his marriage would be mended. He even had come to me, his pastor, and asked me to pray this prayer with him as well. And yet his marriage still ended in divorce. 
He went through a dark period, and I watched him struggle. But then I also began to watch God work in his life that God began to transform some things that were at work that were happening in his life and I began to watch him follow God more closely and more deeply through all of that and he eventually met somebody and he fell in love and they came to me and asked me to do their wedding and it was such a joy because I was able to see life and love and peace and happiness and an inexpressible joy playing out in their relationship with one another as they served in ministry with one another as well. He caught me after the ceremony and he said, Brad, remember that time I came to you and I asked you to pray that God would mend my relationship with my first wife, that God would not uh, allow that to end in divorce? And I said, of course, I uh, I remember that very, very well. He said, well, this may sound strange, but I'm grateful for that unanswered prayer. He says, I am grateful that God did not answer that prayer in the way that I wanted God to answer that prayer then. Hmm. Unanswered prayer. So many people have felt this at one point or another. When we have gone to God in our moments of crisis, when we go to God in our desperation and we pray to God that God will intervene and that God will heal and that God will fix and that God will, will transform an entire situation and then... We realize that that's not going to happen. And so we sometimes then think that God is ignoring us, that God did not listen to our prayer request, and that God has even abandoned us. And then we begin to analyze ourselves, and we begin to think poorly about ourselves. We start feeling like maybe The reason God didn't answer these prayers is because I failed to live for Jesus. I uh, I wasn't a person of good faith, or or maybe I had some kind of unconfessed sin, and and so God refused to answer my prayer request because of that. Or maybe I just didn't pray properly. (laughs) When prayers go unanswered, we go through this valley of feeling abandoned and unworthy. And then we even begin beating ourselves up. And sometimes we even hear other people say things that just heap coals on our head. And we even feel worse about ourselves than what we had previously felt. You know, though, maybe we have an opportunity right now, especially with everything that's going on in our world. I mean, this was not a part of most people's plan, this coronavirus and the things that have happened because of it is not a part of of the plan. We didn't expect life to go this way. So now that we're there and now that all of this is happening, maybe this is a great opportunity for us to take a step back and to revisit this thing called prayer. Maybe we need a new understanding as to what prayer is, as we also seek a new understanding and gain some new insight as to who God is. Maybe we need to revisit that right now. I think a lot of times we go to prayer like the genie in the lamp, and we we go to God and we say, I've got these three requests, God, and you rub the lamp and you, you give your requests, and poof, we expect God to be like the genie and answer our requests just the way that we asked for them. Well, maybe now is a great opportunity for us to to rethink that, to revisit that, to allow our understanding of God and what prayer is to be refocused in this time. Maybe, um, Maybe God is more like a parent. We, we call God Abba. We call God Father, our Father who art in heaven. The Bible even describes God like a mother, a mother who gathers in her chicks. Maybe God is like a parent who loves us and loves us so much that there are things that we sometimes feel like we want or need, and it may not be what's best 
for us. I know as a parent, I have thought that over my children. I, I don't always give in to everything that they ask for because I know that some of the things are not good for them. And I want to protect them because I love them. Maybe this is a great opportunity for us to take a step back and to rethink what is prayer? And is unanswered prayers always a bad thing? The Apostle Paul talks about unanswered prayer in one of his letters. Yes, Paul, the great evangelist, the one who spread Christianity throughout the Mediterranean world, the one who did more for the cause of Christ in that very first century than any other person, that that he got out there and he established churches all over the places, the man who saw miracles happen, this great evangelist who wrote a lot of our New Testament, Paul, he describes a time when he experienced unanswered prayer. So I want to read that to you. It comes, we find his discussion about that in his second letter to the Corinthians, and we will pick it up partway through verse 7 of chapter 12. So 2 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, partway through verse 7. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this. Three times he goes to God in prayer. He appeals to God in prayer about this thorn in his flesh. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. And whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Golly, may God bless the reading, the hearing, and the doing of these words. Three times, three times, Paul prayed for this thorn in his flesh to be removed. This is the Paul who did so much for the sake of Christ, who witnessed miracles, who was a part of, of miracles, who was freed from prison by angels, the one who trusted God in the most dire of circumstances. Three times he prayed for this particular thorn in the flesh to be removed from him. And the answer he received back is that God's power is made perfect in Paul's weakness. God did not heal him in the way that Paul had asked for it. But God helped Paul, helped Paul to gain a new perspective in the midst of this thorn in his flesh, that God helped him to deal with his struggle. And in fact, that God not only promised to be with him and walk with him, but that God would use it for God's glory. You know, God doesn't always answer our prayers in the ways that we pray them. Even if we offer those prayers in faith, even if we come to God in our most desperate of needs and we we bear our heart and our soul to God, there comes a time where not always are our prayers answered in the ways that we pray them. But... In the midst of all of that, God does not abandon us. In fact, God will use our situations to show us 
God's power. God will use our circumstances to do something new and to do something beautiful in our lives and in this world. You know, last week we talked about Jesus when he was discussing the will of God. He was in the garden of Gethsemane and he said, Abba, Father, in you all things are possible. So if you would remove this cup from me, yet I know not my will, your will be done. You see, that entire passage occurs in the context of prayer and that God would take a horrible situation, which was not a part of what we discussed last week, God's intentional will for this world, but that God would take a horrible situation and that God would transform it and God would do something new and God would use it. So then, if prayer isn't always about us getting what we want in our times of desperation, then what is it? How does God answer prayer? And what is the purpose of prayer? From my experiences, I feel like God's typical way, God's usual way of answering prayer is through people. I believe God sends people into my life. I believe God sends people to change some of the circumstances of my life to enable me to begin to experience God's answer to my prayers. God uses people. God nudges us to go there and to be there for people. You know, I love the movie Bruce Almighty. I think, uh, obviously, there's some things in there that I don't necessarily agree with, but there's also some pretty good theology there as well. And at the end of the movie, after Bruce has relinquished the powers of God and has become Bruce again, one of the things that he says is, go and be the miracle You know, God nudges us and God calls us to go to people. God may remind us of someone that we need to call or we need to go check on. Maybe it's someone, a blast from the past, and we feel like, well, why did that person's name come to my mind? Those are what I like to call God incidences, God nudges, and that God wants to use us to be answered prayer for other people. God invites us to be a part of the miracle. God intends us to be part of the answer to someone else's prayer. The trick is that we need to pay attention, that we need to listen. We need to be attuned to those God promptings. And that We need to not only be listening out for those as it relates to our prayer requests and the ways that we're hoping God will answer our prayers, but those promptings that then send us to others and to possibly be that help, to be that answer to a prayer for somebody else. And that so often in that prayer isn't about what I want and prayer isn't necessarily about what I get delivered from. But prayer is the assurance that I will not be walking alone, that God will certainly walk with me, and that oftentimes God will then surround me and send to me others who will walk with me as well, and that God will then send us to other people so that we may walk with them. And that in the midst of all of that, God is about a transforming work. And that God is doing something in the midst of life's circumstances. That God is using that to change our lives, to change other people's lives, and to change the situations in our world. God nudges us and God calls us. I believe that's God's typical way of answering prayer. Now, that's not to say that God doesn't answer prayer miraculously. Of course, 
Jesus says, bring your requests to me. You know, there are times where I have seen miracles happen, and they are truly miracles. But what I have noticed is that most of the time, God simply works through people, that God lines up certain situations, and and that we walk with God through that, and we walk with the people that God has surrounded us with in those situations. So, Go to God. Bring your heart to God and listen for God. Now, what we've been talking primarily about up to this point is something that is called intercessory prayer. Prayer that asks God to intercede. But is that the only thing that prayer is? I've always believed that prayer is a conversation that puts us into a deeper relationship with our God. That prayer is one of those essential components to a closer and deeper relationship with the God that we pray to. Whenever I do any kind of premarital work with couples, one of the things we always talk about is communication. And that is not only sharing uh, our feelings in the best ways we possibly can, but it is also listening, listening for what God is trying to speak into our lives as well. Prayer is a journey alongside of God. It's more than just asking God for something. It's a lifelong journey. It's communication. It is intimacy with God. Recently, Jamie Bachknight purchased a book for me on prayer. In fact, the book is simply called How to Pray, A Simple Guide for for Normal People by Pete Grieg. And in it, Pete takes the word pray and he, um, he makes an acronym out of it. And what I'm gonna invite you to do today is to pray. And we're actually going to use this acronym, PRAY, to help us develop a more full and robust and intimate prayer life. Because, yes, prayer involves us bringing our hearts to God and asking God those deepest needs of our lives, but prayer is also much more than that. So, we're going to end this sermon time with a time of prayer. And we're going to use uh, Pete's acronym, PRAY, to lead us into this time of prayer. So I'm going to invite you to just kind of get settled, uh, whether you're in your living room or or wherever you may be, uh, sitting at the table or whatnot, get comfortable, um, uh, just relax, uh, take a few deep breaths. uh, And I want to invite you into a time of prayer. And I'm going to describe one of those four aspects of prayer that Pete shares in his book. And then I'm going to give you a minute to pray in that way. So let's, um, let's prepare. Let's prepare for this time of prayer, for this intimate conversation with the Lord our God. The first component that Pete talks about... The P is for us to simply pause. Pause. It's the first step towards a deeper prayer life. That we just need to put down that long list of prayer requests to set our lists aside and to just pause, to sit quietly. Scriptures say, to know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. So I want to invite you right now to just set your mind at peace, that you may pause, that you may check any baggage that you may have right now at the door, and that you just simply be still with God.
The second aspect of prayer that Pete describes using the letter R is to rejoice. That once we have paused, that we then take a moment to thank God, to thank God for all that God has done in our lives. Jesus said, hallowed be thy name, to give glory to God, to thank God for what he is doing in our lives, for what we have, for what has not been taken away, for what God has given to us. So now I want to invite you, now that you've paused, that you have been silent, that you have sought God in that silence, now to give thanks to God, to rejoice in God. So give God praise and thank him and rejoice in him now. The third aspect of prayer that Pete describes using the letter A is to ask. We've talked a little bit about this already. It's that intercessory prayer, bringing our heart to God and asking God to attend to some of our needs, to invite God to intervene into our lives, knowing that sometimes our prayers may not be answered in the way that we pray them. But we are still called to go to God and to ask God to be present and to bring our requests before him. So now I invite you to a time of asking God for help that you need now in your life. And the final component that Pete uses the letter Y for as it relates to prayer is we are to yield, yield. We are to surrender that which we desire for ourselves. And we are to surrender that to God, that we may listen and hear what it is that God is calling us to do. Listen for those places where we need reconciliation in our lives, where we need to surrender what it is that we're proud about or what we desire and surrender it over to what God desires for us. As Paul wrote in Philippians that Jesus emptied himself and took on the form of a servant. So we empty ourselves of our desires and that we yield and submit to what God desires for our lives. So I want to invite you now into a time of yielding and surrendering your life to God. Well, friends, we may not have all the answers to why all of this is happening, why we are going through this moment in our lives. And it may not be the plan that we had. It may not be the way that we saw our lives going. But the promise today is that God is with us and that we have this great opportunity to be in an intimate relationship with God, to communicate 
with God, that we have the opportunity to pause, to sit, to listen, and then to give rejoice, to give thanks and rejoice in God. We have the opportunity to bring our requests and to ask God to hear the requests of our heart. And then we are invited to yield in our own lives, to, to submit to what it is that God is desiring for us in our lives. God wants that relationship with us. And so I pray that over you as we go forth on this day. Again, we are so glad that you have worshiped with us online today, and we just ask you to continue to respond, respond to how God is calling you, those nudges, uh, those God incidences, respond to however it is God is calling you to reach out to people and to love people, especially in this time. And again, if you want to respond by giving to God's work and ministry in this world, go to palchurch.com. Uh, you can go on the Give tab or go and download the Church Center app. You can give there as well. And then finally, if you wanted, you can just mail in a check so we can continue to be about the ministries that God has called Pal Church to be a part of, ways in which we are seeking to meet the needs of people and to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Well, again, we are so glad that you have worshiped with us today. We look forward to seeing you again soon. I will be doing coffee with a pastor immediately following this video. So uh, go over, or if, if you're already on our church's Facebook page, just stay there and I will be there with you in just a few minutes. And you can bring any questions to me that you may have, uh, things that are happening in the church. Maybe you got questions about uh, the message today. I'll hang out with you from about 1015 to 1030. And again, I hope you all have a very happy Mother's Day. Take care. God bless. We miss you. We love you. Uh, we can't wait to be back with you because we want to make sure that we're being responsible in all of this stuff that's happening in the world around us. But one day I look forward to being back with you in person. Take care. God bless. And have a wonderful day.